So in the in the last tutorial we worked with Pong, we kind of created this little Pong game here, and we definitely want to play along on that line and make more uh, in another game later. But until we get into that, I actually just want to dwell a little bit on some of the key issues we always find when people have to learn to program. So we want to kind of just uh, kind of show some few examples and show us a few concepts and make some uh, some examples of that. So if you look at this uh, code, one essential thing to understand is actually scope, to understand what a scope is. If you don't understand what a scope is, it all becomes a blur. But as soon as you get the scope concept, then that's when you kind of start to understand coding, or at least that is a key concept to understand when you code. And a uh, scope is, um, is what you have uh, between the two uh, curly brackets. So here we have a scope, here we have a scope can be inside scope so this scope here is actually inside this scope and this scope is inside the same scope uh, here we have actually a scope inside a scope inside a scope and here we have another scope so this is the scopes and the scope the scopes kind of says all right everything that's within this scope is run when the condition above the scope scope is met so if somebody calls it up processing calls it up when you start the program then whatever is code is in here is kind of run but only in that given situation. And the same thing with this scope. This scope is only run when uh, when uh, uh, run 60 times times a second, and that's processing that calls it all over and over and over again. And then we have some scopes in here. So this scope in here is only run when this condition is met, that the position of the ball in this case is outside the screen on the right side. And um, notice that it's indented. So for each scope, we kind of move in, we tap in here a little bit. And that is super important because if we kind of remove the tab so we are like this, then what you have is actually, um, I'm just going to check that everything is recording, good. So what we have here is actually that all the tabs have been moved in and what you have is, um, is something that is super blurry. It's impossible for me to read what's going on here. So when, 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 when people start to program, the code looks like this and it's really, really hard to understand because people don't respect the scopes, they don't understand that this stuff has to be moved in because this scope is a part of that scope and inside this we have to move this in and we have to move this in. And the great thing about processing is you don't have to do this manually, you can actually just press Command T or Control T if you're on Windows and it will move everything in automatically and do this uh, tapping for you. And as soon as you do that, you start to get a clear understanding of what is your scopes and is everything right? Because what happens is, in the, very much in the beginning, you want to copy something somewhere else, and then you mark too much, so you include a, a curly bracket that's actually relating to another scope, and when you then copy it and paste it, you get some weird kind of uh, tendencies where suddenly the scope is completely messed up and it's uh, very confusing because there's twice as many um, uh, uh, curly brackets than there should be. And this, I mean, this is very common, the very common starting problem is to make sure that you have full control over your curly brackets. And you mess it up constantly by copy-pasting or trying to edit and suddenly you remove some curly brackets somewhere and you press Command T and then suddenly you can see here that this part here is suddenly a part of this if statement and also we are missing a curly bracket and it gives you an error down here and then you try to put a a curly bracket in here and then suddenly your program is behaving very strangely because you messed up your scope. Your scope structure is messed up and the program is not running anymore because the curly bracket that should be here is now moved down here which in reality means that all the code that is here is only you, uh, run when the if statement pos x is bigger uh, less than zero is, is true which is very rare. It happens once in a while it seems like. So this is a common problem and a common struggle in the beginning. So I want to drill a little bit about scopes and in, in that process I want to kind of introduce a few things to you. I want to how if statements works and a little more detail about that and then I want to um, also go into uh, the concept of state machines and how they work. So let's open up a new sketch and start uh, programming. And uh, I'm going to do a very simple example where I'm going to do, and write with me here, and just pause the video if I'm too fast. I'm going to be a little bit fast because you have the luxury of pausing me whenever you want to. So feel free to write with me and pause. 
In this case, we are only going to use, in this example, we are only going to run it once. So we just want to run the program and get some output. We don't want to uh, kind of have animations and stuff like that. So I'm just going to use setup for my main uh, scope to work with because I just want it to run once. That's fine. And uh, what we want to do is like, it's a fictive example, or let's say we want to make an app for a bouncer. So this is a bouncer at a nightclub and he wants to know, you know, what are the rules uh, because everything gets blurry and there's so many rules and, and he wants to have an app that can kind of tell him is a person allowed to enter this space or not. So it's completely rational structure that tells exactly how the bound, who is allowed into the nightclub or not. So to do this, we're going to make, you know, uh, some rules here. When are you allowed to get into the nightclub? And we are going to use print line as a way of saying, okay, that's what he's going to say when, 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 when he meets a person. So every time he meets a person, he will enter the kind of the data for the person, press run, and it will just print out, you know, what he's supposed to say or what the nightclub is supposed to say. So uh, you can say, it should say, welcome to the club. Uh, uh, that would be one kind of when you kind of go up to the line and then there should be one that's called uh, you please enter the club so these two here every time you run the app it says please enter the club so if this was a bouncer app it would be kind of a very lean structured app so everybody who shows up at the door can get in even at like an infant child of two months can get in so we need to kind of create some rules around this and uh, to do this we need some variables to kind of define some different properties of a person so property properties of the person who wants to enter the club and one could be, uh, we want the age of the person. So let's say the age is um, 20. And in this nightclub, you have to be 18 to get in. So, you know, you can say, welcome to the club is okay. And then it will write, if age is larger than 20, then you should enter the club. This would be kind of, notice how here I'm indenting this one here. I'm doing it by pressing command T. I'm just moving it in, so I now know, okay, this line is a part of this scope here, of this if statement scope, which is this part here. So if you run this program, you'll notice there's an error because it says, welcome to the club, but it doesn't say, please enter the club, even though, oh, we have to write, uh, even though, okay, there's multiple errors here. Let's, now the rule is that the maximum age is 20, but still, this is a good example because let's say it's 18 to enter the club and the person is 18, then actually he will not be allowed to enter because it's implied in our kind of world that age 18 is, is older than or equals to 18. So 18 is kind of included in it. So it would be like this. And then it will say, welcome to the club, please enter the club. All right, great. So now we have an in kind of a, a kind of basic scope structure. We have setup which runs once and inside that we have an if statement that says if this age is uh, above 18 or equal to 18 then the person can enter. But if we then say a seven year old wants to enter the club and we run it then we'll have a situation where the 17 year old is not able to enter the club but still says welcome to the club. So we need to kind of make some rules here as an alternative scenario. And we can do that by using else. So an else statement kind of says, okay, if else in the in this, so it, either it's this, and if that if this not is not true, then it will take the else statement. And in the else statement, we're gonna write print ln um, please uh, you are not old enough. Uh, please go away. It's a very polite bouncer. So, if the age is seven, then it will say, it will say, welcome to the club, you're not old enough, please go away. So, now we have a structure that an, uh, an, uh, a 20 year old gets in and, uh, and, uh, and a seven year old uh, doesn't get in. 
And we can then build on the whole idea of programming is to build on this and make this structure more and more complex. So we have different rules inside rules, inside rules, inside rules, inside rules, and these inside rules are inside scopes. And by building these com complex subscopes, we can then make different rules. So um, one rule we can say is uh, this club has a problem that people are not very well dressed and they don't want to kick people out if they're not well dressed but you kind of want to encourage, you want to try to make a pedagogical way of encourage people to be well dressed. And one way to do this is to say, uh, we can make another variable up here which is a boolean which can be uh, true or false. So this one can only be true or false. So we can say well dressed. And then we can see equals true. So this guy here is well dressed, and well dressed. Uh, uh, we could then go down in criteria, but let's just generically say well dressed. That means a suit or something, you know, nice shoes. I don't know. So uh, if uh, well dressed equals true, then we will get um, then uh, then they will get a drink. So we will say. Uh, Great that you are so well dressed, you will get a drink. So in this example here, we're actually making sure that the person gets a drink if he's well dressed. So now we have kind of multiple rules and multiple scenarios. Some people just get into the club, some people get in and get a, a, a drink. So if he's not well dressed, but he's still 20, he will still get inside this scope here but he will not get inside this scope here. So now it's just a please enter the club. And we can kind of build on top of these rules and make new rules and, and a new kind of logic to it. We could also say if he uh, arrives, what do, could we say that could be fun? Um, uh, one rule could be uh, if, he, if, he, if he wears a coat, for example, that's a, a common thing to have, wears a jacket. So if he wears a jacket, we will have another rule that says uh, if wears jacket equals true, then um, we have to say print a len. Uh, please uh, give uh, your jacket to the wardrobe. Boom. So now we have a rule that if he wears a jacket, he has to give it to the wardrobe. So in that sense, we can kind of make rules inside rules, inside rules, inside rules. We could have another rule that um, a more complex rule would be, um, uh, let's say on Sunday, you are, you're only allowed to enter when you're 21. So um, that's kind of a common, or not Sunday, Saturday or something. It's common for nightclubs to have different age criteria for different days. So one, that would be a more complex rule here where we will make an, like, uh, an and and an or statement inside it. So the way we would do this is we would say the day, let's say, let's say it's a, a Saturday is a special day where you have to be 21. Then we would say Saturday equals true if it's Saturday. So this is, would be day property. Thingy. And then we would say age is uh, below, below, uh, above 18 and it's not Saturday. So Saturday equals false. So in that case now we have a scenario that you can enter when you're above 18 if it's not a Saturday. And this would actually work as long as it's not Saturday. So every other, any other weekday it would actually work just fine and it works as it should. You can enter when you are old enough. The problem is when it's Saturday, it will actually say you're not old enough and then we will be thrown out even though the person is actually old enough. Let's say it's 21 and the person is 60 years old, then it should be just fine to enter. So let's see what happens. So you're not old enough, please go away. So now something is wrong with our logic. We need to add some more to it. And what we need to add is a pipe. This means or. So in reality it just says or. Um, and pipes is uh, the alternative button and I on a Mac and, and uh, on the Windows is Alt G R and then it's one of the top right uh, buttons right next to the backspace. So we need to make some more rules. We want to say A on the, on the Saturday situation. So we say Saturday equals equals true uh, and 
age is better above or equals to 21 because that's the age limit on a Saturday. So now we have two rules here and we make kind of a more complex condition here to get into this scope. So now the 60 year old can access the, the, the nightclub when he's 21. Uh, when it's Saturday, because he's above 21. And a 20 year old would not be able to enter because it's Saturday and you have to be 21. So this is kind of what you, this is the magic of programming. This is the scopes, the structures of scopes, inside scopes, inside scopes. That's the magic of programming. And that's what you have to start to understand and ha have to get this Ah, that's what I have to do. So I have to make these rules and they have to fit with what the world reality you're trying to model here. So in this case, a bouncer app, it could be a, a Pong game or Asteroids game. And that's what you have to kind of work with and figure out and, and kind of build up. And I want to extend this because now we want to bring back the, the, the Pong game. Because one problem we have in a Pong game is you kind of just play and you get a high score and uh, I don't even remember, can you die? Oh yeah, you lose a point when you die. When you miss the bat, you get you lose a point. That's it. But naturally, you would have some more kind of complex things where you have one state in the beginning, and then you have like where it says "Welcome to the world amazing pong," and then you'll have the pong game, and then when you have certain amount of high score or you, um, amount of points, or you die a certain amount of times, then you would have like you lose or you win kind of scenario, and then kind of it would restart. So. That would require us to kind of structure our code a little bit differently, and that's where the scope comes in, because scope is what structures your code. So I want to uh, kind of give you an example of how a state machine works. So before we start running this one, we want to copy that in, but we want to make our state machine first, because then we can kind of get a sense of what, what, is it, what is required. I will just save this one. Actually, I'm just going to minimize it, and then I can save it later. So. Let's say I have a clean one here and we say void setup and we have a setup and we say void draw um, like that. And then we want to um, uh, create this state machine that kind of have different states and where this game then can happen in one of the states you play the game. In the first state you can just get a welcome screen. And the way to do that, kind of, this is a pattern. So, so what you're creating now is actually a, pat a pattern called a state machine. And I'm using if statements for it because that's what we have introduced. You could also use a switch statement and uh, different other kinds of uh, strategies. But a simple way to do it is just to, to have a, a if statement. So I start out with saying state and then I'm just going to make like, like, so now I'm saying, okay, when I start the program, I want to be in state zero. That's what I'm saying up here. Just I run the program, be in state zero. Simple as that. So now I can make an if statement saying, if in state zero, then do something. Else, do something else. But we have multiple states. We have like three or four states we want to make. So we're going to say, if else if state equals one, then do something else. And then else if state equals uh, two, then do something else. So now we have three states here, and this is our welcome states, and this is our play the game state, and this is game over state. When you have reached a certain level of points, or died a certain level of amount of times, then you reach the game over state. And then, of course, you can have a win or die state. Let's have a win or die state. So we have a game over state a win, and then we have, a, then I'm just going to copy it and then write lose in another one. Lose here, and that one should be three. So the question is, how do we kind of navigate this? How is that a state? So the first thing is to just write background, and then we can say, all right, I want this one to be green. So that's background red, green. And then blue, and then blue, so now we have a green background, and I want to write text, and I'm just going to say, say welcome. Welcome. welcome, and then uh, uh, to the amazing Pong game, Pong, and then I'm going to move it down so it's somewhere in the middle, so that would be height divided by, no, width, width divided by two, that means now I'm in the center, it's the length of the size, and then in the middle, minus... Uh, because this is not centered, I think I can do some text align somehow, but doesn't matter. 
and then height should just be in the middle so something like that should do fine and then we will have a size that is 800 times 600 so now when I play the game I get a welcome message saying welcome to the amazing pong there it is wow it's not possible to read or see so there's something about text size and since I just want to run with one text size I'm just gonna write it up here so let's see 30 might be too much but let's see yeah welcome to the amazing pong so now we have kind of an intro screen up and running and of course you can add a lot of images and a lot of graphics and do a lot of fancy stuff to it I'm just gonna make it less green crazy green because my eyes are hurting by watching this stuff let's see how that looks also um, I mean you can you can open the color picker up here and, and, and select the color yourself and then you get the RGB values here that you can copy so you can just do like that and get them but so the next thing is I want to kind of move into the game so the game is interactive and right now there's no kind of way of getting into the game so uh, one way to do this is just to say uh, check if the mouse is pressed so I'm gonna press the mouse to move into the game so if mouse pressed then I want to go to state 1 so now I'll jump down here and since there's nothing here I'm just gonna for for you to see the difference I'm just gonna add a, another color here I don't even know which one it is it's gonna be a lot of red and a lot of blue a mix of those two so when I click the mouse I switch to the next kind of state in the game so this is where the game is gonna happen this is where we're gonna put all our code here all this stuff that we have in draw here we will put inside from here to here we have to put inside here for the game to work so let's 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 do that now that's fun boom boom it's a good time to do it no reason to delete it just copy and then we say it like that and then you can see our scope is not kind of aligned properly so we have to press command T and then we get a lot of these red stuff here and the reason we get that is because it's missing all the kind of the parameters up here so we need to add that as well all the variables for the game and then the game starts to kind of uh, come along so first we have welcome to the amazing pong and then we click and then we get the game and then there's something about size and the speed that is so slow and we are gonna run along with the slow speed for now because we wanna we don't wanna kind of complicate things too much so I'm just gonna make the screen a little bit smaller and then welcome is gonna be cut off but that's okay this is just an example it's more important for you guys to kind of get a sense of how it works so now we have kind of a game of pong with an intro screen but the problem is we cannot still I mean there's no way of kind of dying or it will just play there's no way to get to win or lose scenario but one thing we can do is just to use the high score here so I mean normally you would say when you reach 10 points but it's too long time for us to play around so we'll just say okay as soon as you kind of uh, hit with a bat you win and if you miss the bat you kind of die that's it so if the ball runs outside your screen you're dead if you manage to hit the hit the ball then you are um, you are kind of okay and then remember we have our two states down here one is uh, you win you lose so now I want a really nice winning color uh, what is a winning color let's see boom 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 winning winning color it's a warm yellow thingy bob and we can just copy that one as well and that should work it does work good so now we have a warm yellow and then this one has to be kind of a mean mean red because it's really you lost and that's red so let's see why is it complaining now it seems like I have too many curly brackets ooh that's interesting I managed ah yeah so this is a classic uh, problem of failure and very much in the beginning and also uh, you see I can also uh, fail here so I put it inside here I need to put it inside here between the curly brackets for it to kind of be structured correctly so that's better 
So now we have two colors and we actually want um, the game then to, when you lose, you end in one color and when you win, you end in another color. So let's say I want to go to the game over state win. So that's when I hit the bat. So I'm just going to say state equals two. As far as I remember, that state two is the game over state win. And when uh, I go to state three. So... Now we have a game where it starts with a kind of welcoming screen, then I press uh, my mouse, and then uh, if I let go, say let's say I lose by not uh, responding, then it should be a red screen, oh no, I'm dead, I cannot get out of this state anymore, there's no, uh, right now there's no way to get back to the game, which is annoying. So we have to fix that as well. Let's fix that while we are at it. So I think we should go back to the welcome screen, so we kind of have a full rotation. So that state zero. And here we're gonna say if mouse pressed, then go back to state zero. So both winning and losing is gonna go back to the welcome screen and then you can press the mouse again. Actually, this is not gonna work. That's a problem. So because we use mouse press both places, we can actually not do this. Then we had to use a key press. So I'm just gonna, for now, that's another issue. So we're just gonna jump to the game like this instead. One thing at a time. This is uh, another kind of uh, keystroke kind of thing that you have to learn at some point. So I lose, I click the mouse, and then the game starts again. And yes, you can see there's something wrong here because the counter is not reset. Every time I die, it's not reset because I haven't made any rules of how to reset the high score. What should happen when you lose, kind of. And uh, in this case, it's the high score, so I need to... Let's see if I just can win as well. Ooh, I didn't manage to win that time. Let's see. Boo, yeah, I get the yellow, nice yellow one. So when we go back to state one, we actually have to reset the score and set the score uh, to, to zero again. So now it's at zero, and now we kind of have the... Um, the structure where you start the game, it's at zero up here, and as soon as you lose, it goes back to minus, it goes back to zero when you restart. So you get actually get minus one, and then it goes to red, and then when you click again, it, it, it restarts at zero. All right, so this is the basic game, and of course, I mean, going straight to this when the score, when we have the score here is kind of, it's kind of sad. It's kind of not so super awesome. So one way to solve, I mean, you could have like, let's say we get three points. Let's just do that. If score is larger than three points, uh, then we want to go to state two. Not larger than, larger than two points or larger than an equal to, because I, would, I don't want to wait for. And then I cannot do, do an else here, but you can do an else if. And then say score is less than uh, minus two. I mean, I lost three times, but not bad. Then I lose, and then I go to the losing state here. So all I'm doing now is kind of raising the bar. So I mean, it's just not one hit with the bat or one miss with the bat. Is I have to, I have to have a collective miss and hits. The sum of hits and misses has to be uh, greater than two or less than less than minus two to be able to to either die or, uh, or win, lose or win. So let's see, now we get here, boom, 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 boop, and then I die, and then second time I die, and the third time I die is where it should be triggered, and then I lose. So this introduces kind of the scope of working with scopes and making sure that you have, like through a state machine, you can actually have a total scope, uh, a full scope system here. I want to add one more thing to, thing to this game because this is all nice and dandy, but um, it's still, I mean, re when you read, read through it, it becomes very kind of compressed code and a long code and it's it's hard of which state am I in and here's the state and it starts here and it goes down here and then oh here's another state and you kind of have to be really clear on about the indent indentation to be able to understand it and one simple 
strategy is to use a method. So you can have one that has, says welcome screen. So this is just a way to kind of divide things and methods are much more advanced than this. This is just a basic kind of concept of methods. So you can have a welcome screen and you can have a, a game screen. And notice how I'm always making sure my scopes are correct as the first thing when I do something because else I'm gonna screw, screw up later. And then you can have a loose screen and then you can have a void win screen. So if we do this we can basically copy paste everything from our game screen which is everything that's run when we are doing the game in state state one we can put into the game screen and then the welcome screen is all this stuff including the mouse pressed we can just put into the welcome screen and then we have a, a loose game over win screen here so it has to be in the win screen with missing an n i can see and then we have the blue screen and it can be here so now it's uh, uh, then we can call and this is how a method works that like this means find the scope that's called welcome screen and the scope is uh, I lost track of it here it is and run the code inside this scope so this is basically the same as just running the code up here as we did before but it kind of separates your state machine and your uh, your different screens. So, game screen, I think it was called, and then you had like a win screen, and then we had a lose screen, and remember to do the command T so we get the indentation correct. And now we have like the same game, but the state machine is separated from our code which makes it much more manageable, manageable to kind of understand what is going on and which part is a part of what because I mean now we just have a really simple loose screen here but it could be something much more advanced. So this gives you a basic understanding of, uh, of stroke and uh, or of scopes and how you can use it to make if statements and how if statements can be used to make state machines.